Hi. So one of the things I'm working on today is a uh, story at the city like portfolio construction um, and uh, like a venture fund. And so I have a number of different ways I kind of build this over time, different approaches to it. My, uh, my net net is there's, uh, there's 10, 20 different ways to do this and everything is valuable and useful. Uh, it really kind of depends upon how you per per personally want to think about it for your particular use case. And so I've done this in different ways and models over time. And so what I'm trying to do is kind of always kind of refine to find like the simplest, easiest ways to do it for, um, for, for, for a variety, wide variety of use cases. And traditionally, I've always had like one approach, one model that says, this is the one way I'm going to do it. What I'm trying to do is actually going to evolve like different models for like different um, uh, knowledge sets, like different people who have different bases of knowledge in terms of use cases, in terms of how detailed they want to get for it, how detail they can use the assumptions as part of it. So it's a long way to say what I'm working through is two different versions of, a, of, a, of, a, of an approach in terms of how to model a venture fund. I've actually approached portfolio construction in two different ways. So here's like a, here's one simple way to do it. And this is a uh, simple venture capital model which will soon be available for free. Um, so I've tried to make portfolio construction fairly simple to do to use that as, a, as a blend of some insights in terms of what you expect from the portfolio, and also like an ease of use in terms of be able to make an assumption and get a result, right? Like I want to, hey, I want to assume this thing and I want to see the result. I want to make the easy, that process of using it kind of easy to do so. And so what I've done is I created this like portfolio construction and like return assumption construction in here in the model. And so in this structure, basically what I do is I say, hey, here's an allocation of like new and capital. Here's an idea of like new and follow on. I don't get detailed in terms of like, what that following means, how many rounds it is, what's the timing of all those following rounds over time. I save that for like a different approach. Um, this calculates out the total like capital allocated towards following, the number of following checks that I have to make as assumptions as part of that. And I have this assumption for this return expectations, which is like return expectations and investment expectations for certain types of exits. Now I've written, this is like right off small, medium, large. There's no reason for it to have to be that you could term these any way you want to. You could do it by industry, you could do it by whatever. It's just to say, hey, how am I divvying up my overall portfolio in the different investments I'm doing? So I assume you know, percentage of investments kind of fit these characteristics. And I assume the average kind of gross exit multiple from them. And that's an important one because, you know, I want to make it, I, I, I want to be able to make a portfolio attrition model that makes it easy to assume what's my overall exit, my gross exit multiple. And then calculate a lot of things as part of that, as on, on underneath that as part of it. I assume like an average hold period in terms of years. And then I do this part here really doesn't really drive the model, but it provides, um, a level of like clarity around what the numbers mean. So if you know that your your target investment strategy is to like say get a certain target ownership percentage, it's going to report back out what the average post money is. That model that numbers are used in the model. Like the model is basically just saying, hey, I invest a certain amount of capital, and this is the overall exit gross multiple proceeds, and then I can figure out how to handle the portfolio basis. This is this 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 timing average hold characteristic helps me determine when these proceeds actually happen. Because on an annual basis, and it's going to say, hey, I'm going to hold each of these different investments a number of years, and so it's going to stage in the proceeds from these investments on a lag based upon when the capital goes in. So, like these aren't necessarily again, these aren't part of, they don't drive the actual results, but you know, helpful in illuminating and explaining your strategy as part of it. So the post money is just calculated from your ownership percentage you're assuming. Um, I'm assuming here, like an idea like follow on, you know, you, you could do this basically to say, hey, I'm gonna put money in these investments and I'm just gonna assume there's an average amount of money that goes into each one of these investments and there's an average kind of exit value and ownership percentage. In, in reality, it's probably some variant follow ons. Like, you know, if you're doing, if you're doing a construction like this, you probably assume that your write offs, like you're probably not, you're, you're happening earlier, you're probably not doing a lot of follow ons into them. So, you know, uh, to add a one additional kind of layer of, Kind of detail to it to kind of help explain the strategy. I create this assumption and say, hey, I'm going to allocate my following capital across these different um, types of investments. So this kind of drives to that. And then I'm assuming an ownership percentage at the end. That is a key thing. Uh, in the, the detailed portfolio structure models that I use, that ownership percentage is calculated from the result of like, hey, I'm going to assume a bunch of rounds. Here's the upticks and rounds I'm going to assume. Here's the overall, here's my pro rata strategy, and here's the ending ownership percentage. And I'll show you that approach in a minute. But in this one, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to skip all those intermediate small, those intermediate small assumptions to make it easy to use. And so I'm just assuming like an ownership percentage here and reporting back out what that means in terms of, a, of an average exit value of a company. And so 
this kind of assumptions, these kind of these assumptions drive the performance of the model. These provide an additional level of detail and clarity around what that strategy means on an average company basis. Now, that's one way to do it. On the on the more detailed models that I have, like the venture investor model, for example, um, I have an entire sheet dedicated to portfolio construction. And so the inputs on the get started are actually a little bit simpler. Um, these don't really drive the model per se, but they, they illuminate the strategy, right? So like in this one, the, like the is average gross exit multiple is an assumption that's calculated as a result of everything else. So on the portfolio exchange sheet, I take this idea of like how much money goes into like the first, and I have this allocation of this idea of like a, a capital allocated towards follow-ons. And then what the model does is it says, okay, well, based upon my expectation in future in terms of, an, of a company, in terms of the rounds it'll raise, like basically pre-money, post-money for additional rounds, and my assumptions of what percentage of companies will raise those additional rounds, like at each, at each round, how am I gonna exit? How many are going to uh, fail? How many are written off? How many are raised next round, for example? So based upon that, uh, it's going to then calculate out what my what my pro rata what my pro rata participation is in each one in terms of like what I what my pro rata would be, and then based upon my capital allocation, how much pro rata I have to actually invest in those companies on average. So it calculates out my my investment, um, calculates calculates out my dilution over time. Um, and then there's a couple of extra intermediate assumptions I use, uh, holding period, or time between exits, percentage of companies that fail at each one, so like average exit value, if they exit before they raise the next round. And all of this kind of comes out with a, a calculation of a capital allocation strategy and overall performance on a dollar basis and calculates out an, average, an overall exit multiple. Now that's cool, but it's also hard to use, right? So if... Um, if you were to say, okay, cool, uh, what do, how do I assume a 5x gross multiple or 4x gross multiple, whatever? I'd be like, well, that's, you know, I'd be like, well, that's the result of a whole bunch of assumptions, right? So I have to make an assumptions of, you know, what are the value, what are the, what are the post money at each round? What are my, uh, what are my exit rates and failure rates at each round? That's a good idea of like a graduation between different rounds. What are my exit if they don't raise the next round? What's my exit if they do? I mean, so that you, I would say you have to adjust all of those assumptions to get to that 5x. So what I've tried to do is basically let's say that's even, that's kind of hard, right? That's an unfair expectation for most users of how to do this sort of stuff. So what I've actually done, done is I'm actually just kind of implementing this change now. It's kind of like backed into numbers. So I said, okay, well, let's just say I want to assume a certain rate instead of like having this be the result of a calculation. I want to, to assume this rate. So in this case, uh, what I did was I took the same calcs, I went back back forward through it, uh, and actually like did basically just like the algebra to back into what the number should be, and basically came to the idea of like, hey, this one I want this one to be calculated. So I'm going to change everything else, but this one is the number that's going to be the result of a calculation. So I'm going to move this back to an, to an output. This actually gets moved back to an output too. It's no longer uh, an input. Um, Yeah, and so now when I do it, I can change this instead of being a calculation. This is, I restructure it, so this was actually input. I'm gonna put this back to an input. And now this gets calculated. So let's see here. So what I'm doing now is now that since I've changed what basically what's an assumption and what's not, the logic gets a little off. And so this before is like calculated from like that. I no longer know what no longer happens. And then now like based off this. So now it's basically saying, okay, now I can uh, simply make my assumption in terms of, of effect. Like this percentage is written off as calculated by portfolio assumptions, and this is backed into based upon the, all the assumptions above. So I can do this. Say here's my capital allocation strategy on a portfolio level, my check size. Here's the idea of like how I'm going to allocate the follow-ons. Here is my detailed expectation of how my portfolio changes over time to get really granular in terms of like how it works in terms of what my paradas and my dilution and all everything looks like. Um, but I can still just assume like an average gross exit multiple uh, that makes it kind of really easy to see uh, to, to from a user experience perspective to like assume that uh, and then have the model calculate all the returns like so true back to that. So that's basically what I've been working on this morning. Uh, the venture investor model, this is actually, the model I'm showing you right now is actually an update to the current venture investor model uh, on my site. It'll be released fairly soon. 
um, once I added a cool one more feature. Uh, this venture capital model, the early one I showed, uh, will be is currently like in private beta. Um, will will be available soon. Uh, if you have need to access either one of them, obviously drop me a line anytime. Thanks.